Hello. In this video tutorial for Midas NFX, I will show you how to make a nonlinear static analysis on this leaf spring. So I will consider three types of nonlinearity, material contact and geometric nonlinearity. The purpose of the analysis is to make the spring go down again the plate and to deform uh, with plastic deformation. Now let's go into NFX and open a new project. So this is NFX designer mode. I will import directly the CAD model of my leaf spring. And the first thing I will have to do is to assign a new material to this model. So click on add. And here uh, select nonlinear material, give it a name. Enter the value for the elastic models and the Poisson's ratio. Zero point two six six. Okay, and now we have to create the strain strains data curve. So click here, enter name. You can also directly enter the curve by selecting the data from an Excel file. So I will directly select this in the Excel file, copy, and paste these data into NFX. Click on OK, and don't forget to assign this uh, stress chain curve by selecting it here. Now click on OK. If you look in the walkthrough, you see your spring material has been added. Now I will add another rigid material for the plate. So this one will be a simple linear material. Click on OK. Now in order to change the color, geometry color to the material color, just go in tool and click on color type. And now to assign these materials to your spring, just drag and drop it on the parts. So now you see uh, the, these two materials are assigned. Now next step is to assign some contacts between these two parts. So you see there is a gap between these two parts, so you have to assign a general contact. And this contact will be nonlinear too. So in the contacts type, select non select general. For the master contact surface, select this play. And for the slave contact faces, select these two surfaces. Okay. Now we will add some contact parameters. So I will add some friction, so I will call it friction. And enter 0 0.3 for the coefficient of static friction. Now you have to assign it like that. Click on OK. And if you go in the contact, in the walkthrough, you see the contact you just assigned is now defined on your model. So the red face is the master plane and the blue faces are the slave faces. Now what we will do is to assign the boundary conditions to this model. So click on support and select these two faces of the plate. Okay, and click on fixed and okay. Now we want the spring to go down only uh, along the Z direction, so click again support. And here in the method onglet, you choose user define, select the surface and fix TX and TY. Now we just have to assign the loads. So we will assign a translational displacement to this face and we will do the analysis in two phases. The first one will be uh, the displacement of the spring against the plate, and the second phase will be the return to the original position. You have to, in order to make these two phases, we will use the subcases. And to use the subcases, you have to use different load sets for the load. So we will call this load set 8mm displacement. Now uh, we will again assign another load set that we will call initial position. Okay. 
and we will give it the value 0. Click on OK. You can also verify that these static loads and boundary condition are uh, in the walk tree. So you have these two translational displacements and you can modify them from here or directly from uh, the screen. If you want to modify them, you can select load and boundaries and directly select the load of the boundary condition. And in, with right click, you can edit it. Here it's OK, so I will not modify it. Now I have to create um, another case. So click on general here, enter a name. And we will select nonlinear static analysis. OK. Now here in the geometry part, you have all the parts which are activated. So here your plate and your string, spring. And in these parts, you have the different subcases. So here only one subcase. So I will create another one. I will call it initial position. And I will call the first subcase 8 millimeter displacement. To assign all the loads to the two subcase, click here. And now uh, drag and drop the loads you don't want to use for each subcase. So for the sub first subcase, we will only do the 8 millimeter translation. And for the other, it will come back to the initial position. Now we have to set the analysis control option. It's very important uh, to check these options when you are doing nonlinear analysis uh, because the number of increments and the convergence criteria you use will uh, affect the convergence of your analysis. So sometimes if it's not converging, you have to check and to increase the number of increments to change the, the convergence criteria. Or, uh, and here we have to check this option. By checking this option, it will allow the large deformation. So it's very important to check this. Click on OK. Now uh, you can go also in the output control. And in the output, con output controls, you can unactivate the results that you don't need. So in this case, we will only calculate the displacement and the stress. So if you do that, uh, your calculation will be faster. So I just click on OK. And oh, yes, I forgot to match the model. So uh, it's an important step. And in fact, in the designer mode, if you don't mesh it manually, the solver will mesh it for you. But it's always better to verify the, the quality of the mesh and to make it better. So here I will take very simple mesh. So this mesh is quite coarse. Um, if you really want to analyze the stress inside the spring, uh, I suggest to use a uh, smaller mesh for the spring. OK, now just click on Solve, save your uh, analysis. And now you have to wait uh, the, for the solver to give you the answer. So the nonlinear static algorithm works with increments. So the solution will be calculated at each increment and um, some some solution will be given. So you can view the, the steps here. So the percentage of calculation of your analysis. Here it's calculating first the the first subcase you created, and then it will, when it, it will have finished, it will calculate the second one. So you can see the maximum stress, the maximum rotation at each um, step. So you can verify that it's not zero. Sometimes when, when you are doing this kind of analysis, the time for the analysis is quite long, so you have to verify that the maximum translation or stress is not zero. So you will be sure you don't have any error in your uh, model. OK, now it's almost over.
So you see this calculation was accomplished in 86 seconds. It's very quick for nonlinear analysis. Now uh, we have basically three types of results. Don't forget to activate real deformation or you will uh, not see what is going. Uh. So now I'll see the total displacement. And if you drag this um, bar, you will be able to see the movement of the spring. So you go, it go down again the plate and then it goes up again. What you can activate the deformed shape and the undeformed shape. And if you want, you can also view the mesh. So now you can view that um, the final shape of the spring is deformed in comparison to the initial shape. So this is because of the plastic deformation inside the spring. So in order to view it better, let's view the stress. And let's look at the minimum and maximum of the stress in the model. So here it didn't touch the plate, so the stress is almost zero. And as much as soon as it touches the plate, you see that uh, you have some stress here. Maybe it's better if I uh, unactivate the mesh. So you see it go down again the plate and then it comes back. And when it comes back, there's always some stress inside this part, which is due to the plastic deformation. So it is some kind of residual stress inside. And if you want to see the curve of the maximum stress inside the model, you can extract the results from this model just by uh, selecting solid stress here. Uh, let's extract the form is a stress. And you can select any element in your model, but I want to see the maximum, so I activate this option, click on table, and you will have the maximum result for each step. Then you can directly export it into Excel if you want to do uh, calculations on the data, or you can click on show the graph, and the software will draw the graph directly into NFX. So from here, it began to touch, to touch the plate, and you see the stress is increasing until this point. And at this point, the spring come up again. So you have a kind of release of the stress again. So this is the plastic uh, stress. And then at this point, you see that there's still some kind of plastic strain inside your model. So this is the, the residual stress. Okay, so a uh, last uh, advice. So as I told you, if you want to have better results, it's uh, always better to have good mesh. So in NFX, it's possible to change. You can come back to the pre-mode, click on auto mesh, and you can, for example, remesh your model using uh, hybrid mesh, for example. Hybrid will give you a very good accuracy so click on OK, and uh, it will give you smaller mesh for the spring and better results inside. So especially if you are interested by the stress results, you always have to have few layers of mesh on the thickness of uh, this model. So now if you look closer, you see the hybrid meshing gives you really good uh, mesh. So it's a kind of combination of hexa and tetra mesh and uh, it uses also pyramid mesh to make a combination of these two kinds of elements. Okay, it's um, over for this tutorial. So thank you very much for watching.